southern Germany. The sprawling Bavarian forests of beeches and oaks stretch as far as the eye can see, wild and magnificent. They are one of the largest continuous areas of woodland in Germany. And they are home to some of Bavaria's most ingenious masters of survival. Lynx, wildcat, and deer. It's early February. In the far east of Bavaria lie the Fichtel Mountains. The snow and ice of winter still have an iron grip on the life of the forest. A solitary lynx patrols its territory. He has extra wide furry paws that function as natural snowshoes. The forest seems lifeless and abandoned. Few animals dare leave the warmth and safety of their hideaways. Only the lynx braves this harsh weather. And there seems to be more than one. The fur of the lynx is one of the densest in the animal kingdom and provides perfect protection against the cold. Moreover, their long legs enable them to negotiate the deep snow drifts. Normally, lynx live solitary lives, but this encounter is no coincidence. She is in heat, and he is, shall we say, stimulated. The breeding season is short, and she will only mate with one male. But first, he must prove his worth. Games are part of the course. In feline romance, timing is everything. Intently, he watches her, waiting for a sign. Not yet. She is coy and collected, and in complete control. And then, a subtle move. He grabs her by the scruff of the neck, effectively immobilizing her as he positions himself. Copulation is quick, but they will go through the mating ritual many times over the next several days, until finally, she is no longer ovulating. And the male wanders off to look for another mate. As March rolls around, the days become longer and warmer. Streams fed by melted water travel for miles across Bavaria. They will eventually drain into major rivers, the Main and the Danube. Along the way, in Kaltengrund in Spessart, ponds form, thanks to the local river engineer, the beaver. Reintroduced over 30 years ago, beavers have expanded their range throughout Bavaria. Here in their den, they rest from what is otherwise a busy schedule on their construction site. Their favorite food during winter months is the woody layer of cambium, just below the bark. As the spring weather returns, 
so too do the flowers in a race for light. Liverwort is one of the first flowers to emerge, bringing color back to the forest floor. Wood anemones also soak up the sun's rays and begin to flaunt their soft white petals. While beech nuts send up their first shoots. It's the beech's ability to germinate earlier and with less light that gives them the evolutionary edge. As the tree canopy above becomes thick with leaves, the light doesn't reach the forest floor anymore. As a result, the spring blooms disappear for another year. But darkness has lured one secretive forest dweller back into its realm. The wildcat. Shy and rare, these animals were once extinct in the region. They are distantly related to their domestic feline cousins. Though their behavior and looks are as cute as domestic cats, there's one big difference. They are utterly wild and completely untamable. Reintroduced to Spessard some 30 years ago, their populations have increased along with their territory. But danger is never far away. This is also Lynx's territory. And wild cats must be extra cautious. But this pregnant lynx is only interested in finding a safe den to give birth. Conservation is not a new concept for Spessard. Some parts have been protected for over 80 years. Many of these oaks are over 400 years old. The great spotted woodpecker makes its home inside the upright dead trees that decompose naturally. Ironically, it's the dead trees, known as snacks, that support more life than the living trees. Over 2,000 species depend on dead wood for their survival. In the thick undergrowth near a fallen tree, a wild sow sleeps with her piglets. In Bavaria, the recent mild winters and warm summers have helped their population increase rapidly. She will nurse them for three and a half months. These piglets are only a few weeks old, enjoying their mother's milk and each other's warmth. They will be under their mother's care for the next two years, but soon they will rejoin the rest of the clan in the forest. This wild forest with its dead wood, also provides a good home for the squirrel. Their main foods are nuts, seeds, berries and fruits. But if they have a chance, they will steal eggs and even baby chicks. This jay is intent on protecting its food and it doesn't like it being in his territory. That's because Bavarian squirrels and jays have something in common. They collect and hide food for the winter. Who knows who hid this particular nut?
It is June, and the female lynx is once again roaming the forest. She is searching for prey, large or small, sometimes covering up to 10 kilometers a day. She sees a pack of wild boar. But they are too dangerous. The Zhao, especially, will put up a good fight to protect her young. Roe deer would be easier prey and would last for several days. Duck down. Watch. Sneak up. Then pounce. Though a lynx can run up to 70 kilometers per hour, she only gives chase for a few meters. The deer escapes, surviving another day. By July, summer has fully arrived and the forest is glowing in every shade of green. In the cooler regions of the Spessard Valley, the wildcat mother has relocated to a new den. And her kittens have gained weight. Hunting alone, the mother brings her offspring a rat. Along with mice, this is their main food now. In contrast, the long-tailed tits share the work of feeding their young between parents and other family members. It's a tight squeeze for the birds in this round nest made from moss, spider cobwebs and grasses. A few final touches of lichen camouflage it against the tree. Up to eight helpers, all related to the male, assist in feeding the hungry chicks. Sometimes 12 nestlings are waiting to be fed. These Bavarian forests are also home to the largest beetle in Europe the stag beetle. With antler-like jaws protruding from its head, these oversized mandibles make everyday life a little tricky, especially when eating. Only females can pierce the tree's bark to get at the sap. Lured by the scent of tree sap and female pheromones, the male flies to find the female. The lifespan of an adult stag beetle is very short. With only four weeks to find a mate, everything must happen quickly. But this female is attracting more than one suitor. This one is interested in the female too and challenges his opponent to a courtship battle. With giant jaws at the ready, the fight begins. The winner will get the female. It's a wrestling match that can also be fatal. champion can now claim his price. By gently touching and stroking his antennae and front legs on her back, 
he begins to get her in the mood and to accept him, sometimes spending the whole day together. After mating, the female crawls to the ground. She digs deep under the soil, where she lays her small round eggs near the rotting roots of dead trees. This is food for her larvae, and it will take five years for them to emerge as adults. Spessart was once the hunting grounds of the nobility, and even today, the magnificent red deer still proudly roam the forest. Their presence is a reminder of a time when hunting was more important than the timber industry. Newly forming antlers are protected by velvet. Red deer rarely go into open spaces after sunrise. Shy and skittish, they prefer the safety of the forest. But a cool mud bath feels good. It helps against ticks, mosquitoes and other skin parasites, making it worth the risk. The mother will only lead her calf out of hiding when it's absolutely safe. The young fawns still have their polka dot coats. Unlike the stags that prefer to be alone, the does stay together with their young in small herds for security. Well hidden on a rocky outcrop in the forest, the lynx is enjoying the July sun. She also brought out one of her two kittens, less than three months old. It only seems to be interested in drinking her mother's milk. The other one is timid and insecure, but comes out to its mother for grooming. And while her mother is busy, the other one slips away to explore its surroundings. There's a whole new world for it to discover. Lynx were absent from Bavarian forests for nearly 200 years. And while they have returned to a few places, historic prejudices still threaten their existence. Their survival and future lies in our hands. Im kalte Grund in Spessert. The beavers have been busy with large-scale forestry operations, cutting down trees and damming streams. A new generation has arrived, and the kit hitches a ride on its mother's tail. Although beaver bodies are made for the water, the young kids are instinctively afraid of it. A 
but a true water rat can't be kept away from water. In June and July, the forest berries begin to ripen. Being midsummer, the days are long. Snails begin feeding at dusk. In a garden, they are considered a pest. Here in the forest, they play an essential role in seed distribution and in the growth of mid-level or understory plants. Seeds from strawberries, violets or wood anemones become excreted several meters away from where they were eaten. A predator is on the move. With ferocious mandibles, the ground beetle hunts insects, worms, and snails. But the hunter becomes the hunted. A mouse-eared bat has detected the beetle. Bats use echolocation for hunting, but scientists believe that it relies more on its acute sense of smell to actually locate its prey. A rare visitor has arrived from southern Europe, the striped hawk moth. They are strong flyers and can travel up to 70 kilometers per hour during migrations. But speed is not essential while flitting between flowers and drinking nectar. What is essential is to fly at night. Warm summer winds have also assisted other insects in flying long distances over the Alps to Bavaria. Blossoming meadows welcome their arrival. The hummingbird hawk moth has arrived from the far south. With its unique flying style, it's one of the few hawk moths that is active during the day. As big as hummingbirds, it's a powerful flyer and able to hover while feeding on nectar-rich flowers. Migratory hawk moths are not the only visitors from the south. The heat has also arrived. Scientists estimate that the average summer temperature has risen one degree Celsius in Bavaria. Our nature is changing. Flamingos in Bavaria. These birds are all legs and neck. They wade from lake to lake. Where they come from, nobody knows. Many have lost their pink coloring, a possible indication that they may have escaped from a zoo. These exotic birds wouldn't normally be able to survive in Bavaria, but thanks to global warming, they now benefit from the rising temperatures in the region. Flamingo's beak has a unique strainer that filters out food from the water, similar to baleen whales. Their curved bill allows them to feed on small organisms, but by fully submerging their head and agitating the water with their feet, they suck up mud and water to capture all the tasty bits. Even spoonbill sightings are becoming more common, and like flamingos, they are not the typical avian visitor to Bavaria. They use a different technique to filter the water with their beak, but often they just grab.
They seem to have taken to the Bavarian swarms and mud flats that provide them with an ample supply of food. Fish, amphibians, and even eggs or chicks are on their menu. These social birds have been expanding their territories in recent decades, but have only arrived in Bavaria within the last 10 years. Come autumn, they will leave to winter in the warmer climes of West Africa. All across the blossoming Bavarian meadows, increasing temperatures are attracting other newcomers, the European bee eater. This colorful bird is native to the Mediterranean areas, but seems very satisfied here, especially with the local cuisine. A large dragonfly makes for a perfect engagement gift. Mission accomplished. The newly paired couple get to work, excavating a nesting burrow in the sandy banks. Breeding colonies here are still small and very rare. It is still too early to tell whether these colorful birds will return year after year and become a permanent feature in the Bavarian landscape. This summer has been unusually hot and dry, and it hasn't rained for weeks. But the drought isn't a problem for the dung beetle. All they care about is fresh dung. Dung not only contains undigested plant material that serves as a source of food, but it also contains a large amount of water. Males and females work together. Sculpting pieces of the dung into a large ball, they roll it away from the dung pile as quickly as possible, keeping it from the competition. A dung ball can be a thousand times heavier than the beetle itself. It's the equivalent of a human pushing 80 cars. The dung ball is food for her larva. Dung beetles have nesting instincts that are usually seen only in birds and mammals. They are the only beetles that take care of their offspring. Extreme summer heat continues to scorch the forest. Drought conditions parch the landscape. In the burrows of the bee-eater breeding colony, the eggs have hatched. It's a busy time for the parents. Rarely is there time for even a short break. The chicks in this nest are only a few days old. While one adult tends to the chicks, the other hunts. In the nearby nest burrow, the chicks are already three weeks old, and it's time to lure them out.
or not. It takes a lot of persuading. And a lot of insects. They still have much to learn before leaving on their southbound migration in August. The noisy wild pig continued to roam the forest in search of food. In the nest below, the bee-eater has good reason to panic. Once over the embankment, the herd moves swiftly through the forest. The piglets struggle to keep up with the sow. She knows where the food is and the best watering hole. The pond has shrunk significantly in the drought. And the newly exposed muddy area becomes an arena for playing and fighting where the piglets can test their strength and fight for rank. The water levels have dropped so much that even the beaver lodge is on dry land. The sow's sensitive sense of smell leads her towards it. Manners and respect for property are not exactly in a pig's DNA, and the hungry pig will do anything to get to food. The startled beaver flees to safety, keeping far away from the invading swine. And all he can do is watch and wait for them to leave. Wild pigs are very social animals, and families of all ages join to roam together in a matriarchal herd. Only the male bulls are solitary. Rummaging through the mud, they find mollusks, larvae, and roots. Social ranking dictates who may eat and how much. The high-ranking sow charges over to defend her piglet. Wild pigs are extremely intelligent. Yet they startle easily, and any unusual sound can send the herd into flight mode. But calmness returns just as quickly, as if nothing had happened. Resting and dozing for hours is part of their daily routine. And it's hard to keep a pig away from its mud therapy, 
it's a well-deserved treat that cools and provides relief from skin parasites and mosquitoes. After a long, eventful day, calmness sets into the pond. The beaver takes this time for extensive grooming. Twenty-three thousand hairs per square centimeter need to be combed with its preening toe to keep it clean, mat-free and waterproof. The young lynx patiently awaits his mother's return. Her coloring and marking act as excellent camouflage, but thanks to highly acute hearing, the little guy can hear everything. The cubs are barely four months old now and are still entirely dependent on their mother. Playtime is also exploration time and for having mini adventures. Practicing hunting skills on the mother is never a bad idea. With the mother having established territory of about 150 square kilometers, the cubs are in good hands. The wildcat and her kittens continue to live well hidden in the forest undergrowth. And while one prefers to stay near to the mother, the other is eager to explore their world. Despite distractions from the shy kitten at her side, the protective mother keeps a watchful glare on the adventurous one no matter where it goes. Wildcats are naturally skilled climbers. Still, the shy one would rather be on the ground. Not the intrepid one. He'd rather stay in the tree than be down on the ground with his mother and sibling. Not even the approaching rainstorm can coax it down from the tree. Wildcats, unlike most of their feline cousins, aren't afraid of water. Their thick fur can handle a little rainstorm. The mother calls to the adventurous one to come down from the tree. And when that doesn't work, she climbs up to escort him down.
After a long period of drought, a torrential downpour occurs. It's not uncommon to have over 30 thunderstorms a year, and the storms are becoming increasingly stronger. At first, it's refreshing. And a welcome relief. But the longer the rain continues, and the harder it falls, the more dangerous it becomes for animals and plants. This heavy rainfall is the first sign of climate change. With global warming, more water evaporates, enters the atmosphere, and is released as precipitation. And too much rain causes even a beaver pond to overflow. In kalten Grund, the force of the water breaks the beaver dam, with more and more water flowing through. It is time for the river engineer to act. Swimming with branches, grass and mud, he gets to work. Moisture hangs in the air. Although it's only August, the feel of autumn spreads with the mist. Amphibians, like the temperature-sensitive salamander, emerge from hiding places. Grey herons fish in the shallow waters. With the rain, the drought has suddenly come to an end. But the many hot days of summer have left their mark on the forests. And not all animals have survived the extreme weather as well as the wild pigs. For some it was just too much. The old sow grabs the opportunity. Wild pigs are omnivorous. They know very well how to dispose of a carcass. Finding meat in the forest is a seldom found luxury, and they greedily feast on the deer. Nothing is wasted. Even the bones vanish. In less than an hour, the deer has been consumed. Nothing is left behind. 
the forest ants have to look elsewhere for their food. The worker ants are incredibly strong. Gripping with its powerful mandibles, they can carry up to 40 times their body weight. Summer is the time of intense activity in the ant colony. The nutritional needs of the developing eggs and larvae are enormous. On average, a colony collects 28 kilograms of insects every year, which the hunters capture using their stingers and powerful mandibles. Ants have an exceptional role in the forest's web of life. Violets, green woodpecker, gossamer wing butterflies and aphids would not exist without them. But not everything that looks like prey should be considered to be prey. This is a bombardier beetle, and he has a unique defense mechanism. When attacked, boiling superheated toxic liquid is blasted at its aggressor from its abdomen. He can trigger this mechanism several times in a row and even aim the spray at its target. The attackers have no choice but to retreat. In early September, the leaves of the Bavarian Spessart forest begin to change color. Surrounding the fairy tale town of Lohr am Main are seven mountains. And it is here that Snow White's original castle is located. Legend has it that the life story of Marie Sophie von Ertal who lived here with her stepmother in the 18th century, was the basis for the fable. But unlike the apple in the fairy tale, these apples are not poisoned. They come from one of the many nearby orchards and are far superior to the regular supermarket apples in every way. As October arrives, autumn finally moves across the country. Days get shorter and the nights are colder. The lynx enjoys the warmer hours from its hideaway. The shy cat has found it safe between the rocks, the bushes, and the dead wood. Numerous mushrooms and toadstools bloom in the warm, humid autumn days. Poisonous fly agaric will continue to grow until mid-November. As the first snow of the season dusts the magical landscape. The crisp, dry winter air makes the sky shine a vibrant shade of blue. 
having successfully raised her kittens to be independent, the wildcat is once again alone. And once again, ice and snow return. And winter once again takes hold of Bavaria's cities, countryside, and forests. And ingenious as ever, Bavaria's wildlife will somehow find a way to stay alive. 